Hopefully by now you've already watched our first two videos on ultrasound guided IV placement, and maybe you've even made your first few attempts. This video is going to answer some commonly asked questions, and we're going to cover some tips and drills that will help improve your technique. I'm Matt Wall, I'm a nurse and clinical educator with Echinos, a company that develops intelligent medical tools to empower nurses and healthcare providers like you. First, let's take a look at the three questions that tend to come up regarding ultrasound guided IV placement. The first question we're going to talk about is why can't I find a good vessel? So the first thing you want to do is just practice scanning, right? Grab the ultrasound machine, go into your patient, you don't even have to stick them, and just see what vessels you can find. The more practice you get, the better you're going to get at locating these vessels. The second thing you want to think about is that you may be putting too much pressure on the ultrasound probe. Remember that putting pressure on the probe will collapse the vessel making it smaller, and you can even put so much pressure that you completely collapse the vessel from view. And the third thing that you may try is starting to scan from the antecubital region or that elbow region where the vessels are larger and easier to find. Then map them down to the forearm to the location where, where you'll stick. The second question is why do I keep blowing the vein? Now part of this is also has to do with skill and practice and something you'll get better with over time. But what I do see is that this comes back to your technique. Um, a lot of people will say that they're kind of on track, they see the needle coming towards the vessel, and then boom, all of a sudden they're, they're completely through it. So this has to do with really refining the technique of that advancing the probe and then advancing the needle. So you either need to follow that technique more closely or you need to take smaller steps. So just like little tiny baby steps of advancing the probe, needle, probe, needle, this will give you a finer degree of control so that way you're able to get right into the vessel but not through the other side. The third question and maybe the most common question is what happened to the needle tip? Um, it was there one second and now it's gone and I can't find it. So one thing that can really help with this is anticipating the trajectory of the needle. So if you kind of see it enter the surface of the skin and then you're slowly advancing it, but then you lose it, if you, ha if you have a good idea of where that needle tip was moving, then usually you're able to kind of um, find it again and locate it. One other thing that can help you is wiggling the needle. And what this will do is it'll wiggle the tissue around the needle tip, which will kind of uh, clue you in with secondary signals showing you like that tissue moving so you know roughly where you are, where in the region of the skin that you are. We're actually gonna go over this as a drill um, later in this video. There are a few drills I recommend practicing to help improve your technique. Drills should only be conducted on a practice block and not a patient. All right, this first drill is simply mastering the bullseye. So what we're gonna do is put our probe on the practice block, find our vessel, and go ahead and insert the needle. All right, and keep inserting until you get it right in the center of the vessel, which is what we call our bullseye. Once you have the bullseye, the drill is to continue advancing the needle until it's completely hubbed or you run out of needle. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna advance my probe, now my needle, probe and needle, and I'm keeping it right in the bullseye, so right in the middle there. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I am completely out of needle. If you notice that you start to drift, so if your tip is starting to kind of go to the side, just simply correct yourself and bring it right back towards the middle. What this drill will do is help you, uh, prevent you from drifting and accidentally going through your vessel. All right, this next drill I call an angling drill. So basically what we'll do is get that bullseye appearance again. So let's see, there's our bullseye. And what we'll do is we're gonna kind of touch all four points of this circle here. Um, so top, bottom, left, and right. And what this does is it helps us get a feel of um, how much we have to angle the needle. So starting in the middle, I'm gonna raise the needle tip and touch the top of the vessel. Now back to the middle and 
Let's touch side to side. Back to the middle again. And now let's touch bottom. So you really start to get a feel of how much you have to move your, uh, your needle to really change your position. And this can also help if you find yourself out of course to the vessel, you're able to kind of course correct by angling the needle. All right, in this third drill, it's gonna involve a partner. So what the partner will do is cover up your hands as you're inserting the needle. What I've noticed is that people will tend to look at the ultrasound probe and then they look at the screen and they look back and forth and back and forth. And every time they do that, their hand drifts a little bit and they, they lose their spot. So this is really a, a crutch. And with this drill, you'll be able to break this habit. So it's okay to put your ultrasound probe on the patient or the practice block. Go ahead and line up your needle and make that just initial insertion. And then that's where your partner is gonna come in who I've got a partner right here, and then they're gonna cover up my hands. So now that my hands are covered, I need to carry on inserting the needle while not looking at my hands. All right, I just got in the vessel, and notice how I, I haven't looked down at my hands, they're covered up, I can't cheat even if I want to. And there we go, great. This next drill is a course correction drill. You'll notice sometimes when you insert your needle, you don't end up directly above your vessel, but this doesn't mean you have to scratch the whole attempt. You just need to kind of adjust your course or your angle of approach. So what I want you to do is place the probe back on the practice block here, center your vessel. Now, normally we would be inserting our needle directly in the middle of the probe because that's where the vessel is gonna be. But this time, we're intentionally going to insert the needle all the way to the left or right of the probe. So it's going to make us come in at a funny angle. I'll go ahead and do that now. And there you can see the needle tip. And at this point, you might say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm completely off course. Um, I should just start over. But instead, um, you're going to practice navigating to the vessel when you're coming in from a strange angle. So we'll do that. I'm advancing the probe, now I'm advancing the needle. Okay, advancing the probe, and the needle tip is there. Probe, and needle. And it looks like I've managed to find my way back to the vessel, and there I am popping into view. We'll make a couple more advances. And there's the bullseye. So you're able to see that even though I came in not directly above the vessel, I was still able to course correct and, and get back to the vessel for successful IV placement. Next, let's talk about a few tips that will help improve your technique. All right, my first tip for you guys is around preparation. So you first wanna make sure that your patient is, is prepared, right? You need to get that patient buy-in. So this may be a new procedure to them, so really work with them, explain all the steps that are involved, so that way they're comfortable. And if they're comfortable, it's gonna make you a lot more comfortable. And then the other piece of this is making sure that you are prepared yourself. One way you can do that is by coming in a little bit early on your shift and sticking a practice block one or two times before you actually go and stick a patient. Uh, you also wanna set realistic goals for yourself. So if you kind of say, all right, man, I've gotta get 30 ultrasound guided IV attempts completed this month, that seems like a really daunting goal. So instead just say, I'm gonna get one ultrasound guided IV in this shift, just one per shift, and which is very obtainable and you're gonna meet your goals a lot faster. All right, the next tip I have for you guys has a very technical name. I call it the wiggle technique or the wiggle drill. So basically what you're, what it helps you do is locate where your needle tip is. Um, sometimes you don't get a very nice crisp white dot of the needle tip and it can be really tricky trying to figure out where, where the needle is. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So 
I'll go ahead and advance my needle a little bit. And let's see, before it fully comes into view, I'm just going to wiggle, wiggle it a little bit. And you can actually see some of the tissue there start to move before I even see the needle tip come into view. So I'll advance a little more and now you can kind of see my needle tip. Um, so this is something that you can do if you're saying like, I know my needle tip should be right there and I'm just not seeing it. Give the needle a little bit of a wiggle. You'll see the tissue around it move and it helps you locate exactly where you are. All right, the next tip I have for you guys is a way to confirm that your catheter is actually in the vessel. So what you will do, is, and this, this occurs right before you're about to flush. So what you can do is put your probe back on the patient and put the probe in the longitudinal view so your vessel looks like this. And then with your catheter you know, already inserted, um, just watch as you flush your needle. It's a little tricky to do this on a practice block, but we'll see if we can, we can kind of see this pulse of turbulent flow. So you can kind of see this little flash that occurs. And that shows me that as I flush the fluid in, it's inside the vessel. Let's see if we can do that again. All right, my last tip for you is simply to relax. There's three things that I want you to focus on with relaxing. And the first is just relax your mind. It can be really frustrating sometimes doing a new skill like this. Try to find your breath, take a minute, you know, Try to calm your mind just a little bit so that way things run a little smoother for you. The second thing that I want you to relax is your, your arm and your hand. A lot of people hold a lot of tension in here and I'll see people kind of like arch up on their arm and they put a lot of tension here. Just relax your forearm down. Try to relax your hand. You know, pretend you're holding a paintbrush um, and you should kind of release some of that tension. And the third thing that I want you to relax is your pressure on the probe. So you may notice that you put the probe on the patient and you don't see a vessel anywhere. Um, sometimes this is because you're putting so much pressure into the probe, a lot of times because you're a little bit anxious about starting you know, this new technique, that you don't even, you, you're putting so much pressure you can't see any vessels. So just relax your pressure and suddenly the vessel will pop back into view. Nice work. You should be ready to approach ultrasound guided IV with confidence. If you should ever have any questions, please reach out to your local Echinos Clinical Resource person. Thank you and good luck.